Hi, and welcome to Linda's Love Talks Q&A Sundays. I'm your host, Linda Summers, with Dr. Zoha Vassal, doctor of psychology, teacher, coach, to opening the doorway to love, removing the blocks that are keeping you from attracting the love of your life. And these shows are all about getting your questions answered in the areas of love and dating so you can come into an alignment with the one um, that you desire right person that's for you. But before I bring Dr. Z, Dr. Z, because it's Dr. Zoha, but Aka Z on board, for any of you who have not seen the show from last Sunday, Losing Yourself in a Relationship, please go and check out that show. You can see it on YouTube, Linda Summers Live, Instagram, Linda Summers Live, Facebook, Linda Summers. And so check out that show because it was a really good show because we're going to be doing these every Sunday. So with that being said, Dr. Z has a doctorate in psychology, emphasis on education and clinical psychology. She has studied metaphysics and has worked with a Sufi master, studied in the field of self-discovery and self-growth since she was 18. She has a book that's coming out very soon, Unlocking the Doorway to Love, How to Attract Your Soulmate. She is now a teacher coach for singles who are trying to attract the love they want and deserve in their life, but can't figure out what is blocking that in their life. So. With that, thanks again, Zoha. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show again. Oh, you're so welcome. It's so good to have you on here. I love the fact that we get to do these every Sunday and we're just going to be answering a lot of different questions that people have. So yeah, we do. And we got a lot of questions. We got nine questions. I don't know if we're going to get through all nine, but we're going to do our best um, to do that. So I'm going to begin with the first question. And so the first question we had is, how do I date when I'm a single mom? Okay, well, from my perspective, what I would say to that is, first of all, why do you want to date? I mean, yes, it's the obvious, but I know from past experience of myself, it was to fill a void in myself because I did not want to be alone because I was in a marriage, two marriages, actually. I got married very young and then got married after that. And so being in a relationship, I was not used to being alone. So that's the first thing that I would ask um, myself is why do I want to be in a relationship? Um, is it because I'm lonely? Is it because I'm trying to fill a void? And I think that when we look at how do I date as a single mom, it's, I think that for me, it's, you kind of know when you've done the work. I mean, if you have just left a relationship, a long-term relationship, me personally, I don't feel that it's really great to go into another relationship. I feel that you have to do some work on yourself. So I think it's really checking in with yourself to see where you're at. If you're trying to fill these voids, if that's why you want to go out and date, that's what I would say is that that's how you kind of know when you've done the work on yourself and you're like, okay, I think I'm ready to go out there and spread my wings and see what kind of guys are out there. And and go from there. So that's my take on it. Dr. Z? Well, I, the question is so general, so I guess it's got a couple of different, different components. One was what you touched up on, are you even ready? Um, but the how part, I'm like thinking, are they talking about like how logistically? Because <laughs> you're a right, single right, mom, right. you got to come up with where do I put my daughter or son? Um, what time can I do this? Um, how do I do this if I don't have the resources? So those are just different components of that same question. And I would say if you think you are ready to go out and you're doing it because you want to have fun and you want to meet somebody new and just bring some companionship into your life, then um, you'll have to utilize some of your own resources, which, which would be parents. It could be friends, you know, to leave your children with. Um, and figure out the time situation because sometimes we're going out and if we're going out late at night, what are our children doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I can see a lot of logistic issues for parents who are trying who are single parents and are trying to get out there and find love. Um, but yeah, utilizing your resources. Sometimes there's other single moms out there that are kind of wanting to do the same thing. So getting together with other single people, not just single moms, single dads too 
get um to get together and say like this will be my date night and then i'll take care of your kiddo for your date night but kind of looking at those kind of logistics to be able to go out there and figure it out if the how is how like where do i meet them that that's a separate question altogether are we talking like online it could be at a church it could be um just different locations but i think linda we may have a question somewhere along the line if i'm not mistaken that might be asking that same question so i don't want to overstep yeah. that, that question so yeah well and i think too like you said too there's meetup groups so there's different groups that you can join community groups like so i think that's another good way but yeah it's a good question because they didn't really define how meaning is it on the dating sites or how will i know when to date so i think we both covered pretty much all those aspects because there are different questions that kind of could kind of lead into that too. Mm -hmm. So um, the second one is on this one. How do I date without abandoning my children? You want to go for that one? Um, I'm assuming I guess single parents or otherwise, I'm assuming this is a general question again. Um, the word abandon kind of seems a little strong. Like I feel like when you're ready to date and um, are wanting to go out there to find companionship, I don't really feel like that's abandoning your children. That's just expanding your who you are and your circle of friends and family and people that love you in order to be able to be a better parent to your children. Um, so I'm not really sure that I would considering consider that abandoning my children. If it feels that way, then it might be that you're not ready or it might be that you need to have a conversation with your children and say, listen, I am trying to, you know, I, uh, mommy or daddy needs to go out there and have some fun, meet some new friends, possibly at some point, maybe even meet somebody else that I might want to fall in love with that might love me back. How do you feel about that? And if they're okay with it, and if you express it that way, that it's about you and it's about you wanting to find love, I don't really think that children usually want what, what makes you happy as well. Um, but once you get into that conversation and if they're ready as well, I don't really feel like they're going to feel abandoned by any means. And always obviously express that, you know, your father or your mother is still your parent. I'm not trying to take that away from you. This has nothing to do with you. This is more personal for me and meeting that relationship that, you know, fun friend or whatever that you're, um, that I'm, that I'm meeting in my life. How you feel about it and yeah. see what your children are saying. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with everything you say, too. And I wrote down my, for myself that, well, first of all, I don't know if children really have the understanding of the word abandonment. It depends with how old they are, too. So, like, we got this language, so maybe because, you know, that probably goes into, like, a clinical psychology part where, you know, were you abandoned and things like that. But I think the same thing. I think that if you are ready, and I feel that we are role models for our children, so we want our children to know you know, that about love, right, and in relationships. So again, I think it really goes back to where are you in your own life, you know, um, ready for a relationship, um, ready to go out and start dating, and this whole, you know, thinking about abandonment, like what does that really mean for you? Do you feel like you're leaving your children? I mean, some of, if, depends on what their age are, they're like, yeah, go ahead and go. <laughs> you know, I'll be glad to have you go out. You know, it's like when the um, you know, children, when you, the parents leave, the children are like free and they're just like, you know, get, eating all the food they're not supposed to eat and things like that. So, and if they're really young children, you know, yeah, sometimes it's for the first time that um, you're leaving, especially if you're a single mom, you know what I mean? And you're leaving, there could be this, you know, for the first time, you know, this crying and things like that, that I think it's healthy actually to have that I don't want to say disconnection and separation, but to have that time, right, for yourself. And so that's what I would say to that. Yeah. And I, I feel like, uh, yeah, you touched upon that beautifully. It's kind of like, again, where are you in your own personal, like if you're feeling it is abandonment, then it's, <laughs> then there might be some more um, conversation with self that needs to be had around that first yes. before. <laughs> Yeah, well, and like we had talked about in the last show, really, it all boils down to where are we at in our own life? Mm -hmm. And in how wherever we're at is going to dictate 
what we draw in because we're vibrational beings. And so wherever we're at, we're going to attract that. And um, we're also going to project those Absolutely. types of emotions and feelings upon our children, upon our partner, upon our friends. And, and so, yeah, I think it's really really well, important to and imagine if you're on a date and you felt like you just abandoned your child to go meet this person like what kind of a date is that going to be so exactly like <laughs> exactly so that's something to take a look at you never thought of that at really because then you're going to be worried about your kids and, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to show on your date you're not going to be present and i think these are all things that you want to be able to have in place so that you you can feel like okay they're fine it's only for a short period of time. I need this for myself. So I think that would be the route that I would say, yeah. yeah. And, and, and at the end of the day, you deserve that. You deserve yes. to go out and have a good time. You deserve to go out and have, meet somebody that might really like you, that you like and start a relationship. You, you deserve that. Yeah. So, and also understanding that, but some of that is linked into some of our beliefs. And so before we can get ready to go out on dating, those might be the things that we need to work on to be ready for dating. Yes, yeah. So that goes back to really the first question is, you know, how do I know when I'm ready to date as a single mom? And I think this is true. Um, well, you could just be single and not, you know, be older when your kids are, are grown. Mm -hmm. So it could be at any level. Um, and it could be as, as parents, you know, how do we know? I mean, well, I don't know about that because really as, as parents, if you're two, you know, husband and wife, you definitely want to have a date night, but that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> that's a whole nother show. So, um, yeah, I love that. That was great. Uh, so the next one is at what point do I, <laughs> at what point do I introduce my children to my guy? Okay. So for me, I've never introduced my children. It's been 12 years. So because I knew at some point deep down within myself that that guy was not the guy. And even though it was years I dated him, I still knew somewhere in my beingness that knowing that spirit knew this was not the person. And I just felt, yes, I could have, but I felt that why would I want to introduce them to the most important thing, you know, in my life is my children, if this is not going to be something that's going to last. And again, this is just my perspective, how I feel about it, that I feel that I just was not ready to introduce my children until I knew that person was the one. And I just didn't feel that person or any, you know, body, um, that's the longest actual relationship that I've had. So that's how it was for me. So I think that, if you know that this is the one, I would say, go for it. If you know in your heart of hearts, and that's a whole other conversation too, how do we know if it's the one? So, I mean, it's so, you know, we can just dive really deep here. And um, yeah, so I give it would give it some time. Even like we talked yesterday, three months, you pretty much know if this person's the one for you and, you know, if they're ready to commit, I mean, that's all the aspects like commitment. Are, is he ready to commit? Are you ready to commit? What does that even look like? And so with given all of that, you know, um, yeah, that's where I would come from. So I don't know that I would wait 12 years. To <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying I've been single, you know, I've been, I, you right. know, I shouldn't say single for 12 years, <laughs> but I've not been in, well, that's, I can't even say that because I was in a long-term relationship you know, for five years, That's a long seems, time like that. you would think at five years, oh my gosh, but it was <laughs> off and on in that five years, okay. you know, so I was dating in and out during that five years, but so all turn, you know, I've been single for five years. I haven't, you know, gone into, gotten married or anything like that, but have been um, single now without having a relationship four and a half years, almost five years. So, um, but I'm just saying that relationship that I did have that five years that was off and on, it wasn't a solid five years of a mm -hmm. relationship. We were off and on pretty much the whole time. So, because it was me toying with myself, you know what I mean? I knew my heart was saying one thing, but my consciousness was saying another. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I didn't love myself. And so, you know, that was why I just did not introduce my kids because it was so off and on. It was like, why would I want to introduce them when we were just this 
you know, bouncing back and forth. You know, the kids would be like really confused, like, okay, is he in? Is he out? Is he what? You know, they know of him, but that's about it. So the bigger question, if I was working with you, would be why were you with this person for so long? Then, even if it was in and out, didn't love I myself. Answered that question, so <laughs> we're not gonna go there. Didn't um, love myself. That was the thing. Okay, so now we've already answered that question, so we won't go there, but um, going back yeah. to the question, yeah. which is when do we um, introduce our kids, I yeah. think I, I'm in agreement. I don't know, again, I don't know about 12 years, but, <laughs> but if you, and I guess it really depends on what your intention is. If you're just having a good time and um, you're not really wanting to get serious with anyone, that's a totally different thing, but if you're hoping for a solid, committed relationship, that's a totally different thing. So if we're looking at a solid, committed relationship, then I, I'm in agreement with you that like when you know it's going in the right direction, mm -hmm. both parties are in agreement that it is going to be a commitment-based relationship. And then I would introduce my children because then they need to get to know this person in the sense that, okay, this might be someone that's going to be around in their life for a while. Right. If it's just a fun situation and I'm not really looking to get committed, I'm not really sure that I would introduce my children. And if I did, I would introduce the person as just a friend. Like anybody could come over for, for fun or happiness and, you know, we're just getting together and it could just be a friend. But for the purposes of introducing someone and having them in your children's life, then yes, I think it should at least be with someone who is somewhat committed because although children are resilient, it just, you don't want to cause um any kind of confusion or commotion in their in their life if you don't have to so i think i agree with that yeah and i agree and i wrote something down because it really brought up something else that i feel that especially if they're young children and even really um probably up until the early teens possibly that they can get attached and if Absolutely. you're bringing somebody but even in for teenagers but even for teenagers you're you're true. like this model so like what we're just going to be you know you don't want your children to to think that that's a normal pattern of behavior where we're just gonna uh have this person and they're si and i'm serious oh yeah next month you know what actually scratch that no not yeah. really so you yeah. want them to know that only when it's important do you introduce this person yeah to me. otherwise it's just a friend yeah definitely so i think it's really important to pay attention because if the children are getting attached to this person and then all of a sudden you rip that person out of their life, mm -hmm. basically, because you're like, okay, I'm not, I, I, this is not a relationship for me. Then the child is going to be like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, We're back I really to like question that. number two, which is that whole issue of abandonment. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're worried that we're gonna we don't want our children to be abandoned but yet we're gonna introduce people in their lives that, that are gonna leave and then make them feel abandoned again so it's sort of in that same line of thinking yeah and I definitely think that they should be checking again I think it's checking in with yourself that's really gonna be important is checking in with yourself but I do want to go back and just reiterate other 12 years now in that 12 years there were, you know, guys that I had dated and, you know, just meet and greets and things like that. It wasn't like in 12, I mean, you know, yeah, in 12 years, there hasn't been anybody that my kids have been introduced to because I have not found the one that you I feel that is, that is going, <laughs> exactly, that is to, and worth introducing. And my kids are older, Grant, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, they're adults, young men. And so they just want me to be happy, whatever that looks like, you know what I mean? But for me, it's still like, I want to make sure that that holds value for, you know, that I'm bringing this person that I know that is the one that I want to be with, you know, things like that. So yeah, definitely, definitely important. So I just wanted to make sure that people are like, but you know what, years. Linda, we're, again, we're just using you as an example because there are a lot of women out there that are still stuck in that situation. And it's yeah. like, if you are, that's actually a very good test. If you're not willing to, introduce your children to them because they're an important people in your life then why are you sticking around with this particular right. person because that means their value isn't high enough yes. in your mind you know yes and you are valuable so you should be letting that person go making room for the new person that can come in that you can introduce to your i love that so perfect yeah beautifully said great point because i didn't even <laughs> yes that's so true your value oh i love it okay the next one is 
why is it when I go out with a guy, I feel pressured into sex after three to four dates? Is that normal? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, is it normal? I, you know, men, uh, okay, so let's go back to um, chemistry and how the, the, the female body versus the male body is the same. For men, yeah, it could be the first date, you know, you're hot, I really like you, what are yeah. we waiting on, right? Exactly, let's, let's get women. to it. <laughs> right, is it, so yeah. I don't know about normal and unnormal, we're going to put that aside for a minute, yeah. let's focus on why do I feel pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't like that word pressure, because if you're feeling pressure, then that means there's something else going on. Like, is the person making you feel pressured, or are you putting the pressure on yourself? If the other person is putting the pressure on you, then perhaps this is something you need to consider. If you're putting the pressure on yourself, then the question is, why are you doing that? Because you really should be um, getting intimate with someone when you're ready and when you feel like you know this person well enough to, to get intimate with. I always tell women that um, remember that we get um, bound to someone because we have a chemical that goes off in our brain when we get intimate with someone. And when I mean intimate, I'm using the word sex interchangeably because sometimes intimate doesn't mean that. Um, but when we have sex, sexual relations with someone, oxytocin go off in our brains and in our bodies that attach us. It's the same thing when we, have, when we give birth. That same chemical goes off and we get attached to our baby. Otherwise, we would be leaving them on the side of the road when they cry every night. So it's the same thing. So make sure you know who you're bonding with because what happens is, let's say four dates. If you don't know this person well enough, if you still don't really know if they're the right one, if you don't know that you trust them, when you bond, all of a sudden all bets are off. Somehow you get love goggles on and you don't see it anymore. Yeah. You um, doubt yourself. You, you, you talk yourself out of stuff that you know you shouldn't be. But because now you're bonded with that person through the sexual act, that oxytocin is giving you all sorts of mixed messages. So my suggestion to women is make sure you know who you're with first. Make sure it's the kind of relationship you want to be in first and then go to that next level mm -hmm. because that part is important. Maybe not so much for men because men don't have those same chemicals released. When they, and that's why they can have one night stands and move on and it's not a big deal for them. Mm -hmm. Some women can, but it's, it's a rarity, okay? It's more that women bond. And then what ends up happening is that you're going to have to almost detox for a full month for that chemical to leave. And I, when I say detox, I mean one month of no contact, not hearing his voice, not seeing his face, not being with them, not smelling them. Who's going to go that long? <laughs> to detach again, to be back to, you know, your regular nervous system where it's giving you the correct information. Mm -hmm. So it's best not to go there until we are fully ready to make that jump and make that um, decision. I love we that. have a rational mind and not a heart mind, okay? And so that's what happens is once we go into oxytocin, we're now in heart mind. We're no longer yeah. utilizing the, the upper part of our, uh, our brain as much. Yeah. I love that. Such a great point. I totally agree with that. And what I wrote down too, first of all, I would look at the word pressure. What does that mean for you? I mean, I feel that we only allow, someone can't make us feel something. We allow that to happen. Like no, no one's twisting your arm saying you got to have sex with me, right? So, and again, it's like where we have to go back to where are you at in your own self? You know what I mean? with everything. So I would say, what does feeling pressure mean? And like you said, I agree. I think that men are very visual. They're hunters. You know, it's like going after and that's just they how they, they operate. And so, um, and I agree. It's when you know, for me, it's like if I know that I'm in a committed relationship, that that one person wants to commit, that it's just us two, of course, so how soon does that happen? You know what I mean? So you got to look at all of that. Um, and I think a lot of women fall into the trap of thinking like, if I have sex with him, he'll love me. Or somehow they're going to be this amazing, great sex. And then the guy is just going to like completely lose himself. Well, no, that's women. That's us. That's the way we think. 
men don't think that way. Men have been right, but again, sex. looking for love in all the wrong places. All the wrong places. I did this Absolutely. because I didn't have the love from my parents, and so, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And this is where, this is why we're doing the shows, right? Mm -hmm. To answer those questions, to help people in those areas of love and dating. So it all goes back to yourself. And so, and again, too, I think as women, that when we have that sexual orientation with that person, it's an emotional thing for us. I know for me, like when I enter into that, because to me it's very sacred. So you enter into that, you give it your all, unless you're after a one night stand or you just want to get your sex filled. But I honestly still think that even if you have the one night stand and you're like, eh, it's just sex or whatever, there's still emotional things that are happening within you that well, are just even our, even are our, building um, up. Even the way our body is made, we are meant to be receivers. Yes. Men are meant to spread their seed and yes. give, right? So for them, it's going to be a totally different situation than it is for women. If you yeah. are a receiver, you don't want to be receiving anything that isn't 100% valuable for you. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying is that if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to do the sexual or, you know, have the sexual act, it's like, you got to know that it's all on an emotional level. It's like you, you're there. And I think what a lot of women don't under realize too, is that when you do, like you were saying, that energy resides because when uh, a man releases, it's like all his, whatever's going on in his life, everything it's all energy right and that energy is you just received all of that so and that that will reside and stay in your body and like you said until you have no contact nothing to detox so i think that's really important too because i mean you figure if you're sleeping you know and i'm not making any judgment or anything like that but i'm just saying if you're going around guy to guy or whatever you know what i mean that there's a lot of other people's energies that are residing within you again well, and a lot of women also ask like you know dr z if i don't have sex the guy doesn't seem to like stick around well all right then let's think about that let's break that down for a minute if the guy isn't going to be with you with you not with your sex but with right. you because they don't feel that you're the one or they don't feel that you're valuable then why would we even want to be with this person again if they're willing to leave, if you don't give them something, are you sure you necessarily want to be with that person? Because right. anyone that likes you for you, it, they can wait. They will wait. Yeah. Anyone that doesn't like you for you or puts any kind of boundaries on you and says, hey, listen, if you don't give me sex, if you don't give me money, if you don't give me this, if you don't give me that, then what kind of a relationship is Gone. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, out, yeah. So again, I think it's really when you are present with yourself and with the relationship and again if you're trying to fill a void or you are lonely you know i you do things that you know that you don't even realize until after you start loving yourself and you realize oh my gosh you know what i mean that wasn't really loving myself but you know it's just it's just it's a journey and it's a journey inside to knowing ourselves to knowing is this person the right person for me? What makes this person the right person for me? Um, why do I even want the relationship? So all of those aspects, I think it really helps with him as well, because you don't want to put him in a relationship that he doesn't even want to really, you know, and he wants to be with you and really you should be with somebody else. And, you know, it just goes into a whole lot of stuff that doesn't need to be. So you just really, when you're in tune with yourself, you kind of know, if that feels right. And then it's like you said, you just, you see, but you're present to what is happening in the relationship. Is there this dialogue between us? Is he calling me? Is he talking to me? Is he asking me certain questions about me? Is he, or is he, you know, just want to see me on the weekends and the nights and you know what I mean? Certain times. And then you kind of go, well, you know, that may be a booty call there, but <laughs> so. Well, and the thing is, a lot of a lot of women say, Doctor Z, you must have not gone out. Have you seen these guys? You must not date a lot or whatever. And I say, listen, one thing I know is this: is if you say no and the person walks away, then that's still information that you have. Exactly. Because perhaps, because what happens is women sleep with the man and then put on expectations on him. In other words, the guy never wanted to commit. 
and in so many words may have even said something that you didn't hear and now you had sex and now you're expecting him to commit and then they become these needy creatures and it's just better all around for everyone involved the man and the woman for you to really know what the intentions of the person is and if yeah. you want a committed relationship that they want that too and if you don't have sex and you wait and figure all of that out, it'll be worth your time a lot more than having sex and then just having to go through all that heartache again. Yeah. How much time do we actually waste at that point, right? Yeah, so true, <laughs> so true. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do this last, um, this last question and then we'll get to the other uh, four next Sunday and we'll mm -hmm. probably have more next Sunday too. So where is the accountability of men on dating sites and them just being good men. I'm not sure I understand so, that question. I, I'll go ahead and answer that question. Okay. <laughs> um, so the accountability, I feel what she's saying is the accountability of being who you say you are, being what you say you're on there for. Look, if you're on a dating site, it's a dating site. You know what I mean? Then you should be dating. But, you know, you've got people just one night stands. You got people that are scamming you got people that are, you know, just that are married out. looking for. Yeah, you, know, you got people there for all kinds of stuff. But I want to say this. I don't feel that it is all men. I feel that it's just as much women mm -hmm. as it is men. So to to really say men should be one way. I don't know. I would beg to differ. I think it, I feel it really goes both way. And I really think that if you, the accountability, again, it really goes into where that, where's that person when, you know, whether the guy or the girl they're posting, um, do they really want a commitment? And I'll have to say with that guy that for five years, deep down, I really did not want a commitment. If I really look back, and you're only going to attract where you're at. If I deep, the subconscious it was, it is what runs your life. Subconsciously, I did not want a committed relationship. I loved my freedom of being alone. But consciously, I wanted a relationship. So what I was attracting was an un, uh, uncommitted man, which everything was there. It wasn't like he wasn't saying it, but I was not hearing it because you know what I mean? Because consciously, this is what I wanted. So I feel that when people are posting, they already know, you know, they're saying, you know, I don't, I don't want a, a, a committed relationship. I'm just, you know, some guys are up front, some women are up front, some aren't, some, you know, are, are but can we hold a dating site, dating sites, because there's so many out there, accountable for who shows up on there? I don't, I don't think we can. I think it's up to us as the individual to be accountable for ourselves. What am I on there for? What am I looking for? Am I being showing up as me? Am I being true? Where am I at in my own life trying to fill voids and so forth? So that's kind of what I think. And I think it's both men and women. I don't think it's just for men. Well, I like to think of a dating site as like one of those indeed.coms, you know, you put your applications out there or you're looking for <laughs> jobs and you go and apply. But really, it would be like if I were to say as a boss, what is the accountability of Indeed.com? Like, it's not yeah. the account. That's where you just do the beginning, like, you know, connection, right? After that, it's up to you to interview maybe a couple of times, two, three times. And that's what dating is. It's our interview process with the other person. Yeah. So if we're not asking the right questions or if we're asking the right questions and not believing the other person's answers, now, if they're lying, that's a separate issue. That would be like if you wrote on your application, I speak, you know, German or something, and, <laughs> and then you couldn't. That's yeah. completely separate. Yeah. But if you are being honest to a certain extent with the application process, and if I, as the boss, didn't ask you the right questions, or if I asked you the right questions and you, and you gave me the answers, but I didn't believe you, whose fault is that? Is it you, the applicant, or me, the boss, that was trying to hire? So it's the same thing with dating and I utilize um, business in this because sometimes when you take away the love aspect and look at it from a rational place, um, you turn down that intensity of emotion so you can see things a little bit clearer. It's the same thing in dating. We're going out on dates to be able to figure out if this person 
fits our criteria, okay? And is he this person or is she this person that fits what I'm looking for for my life? Now that could be a committed relationship or just a casual one. Um, so basically it's up to us to figure out if they fit that criteria. If we don't know our own criteria, whose fault is that? It's not that person's fault, it's our own fault, right? If we, it, like you said, subconsciously, I was thinking one thing, but consciously I was thinking something else. Again, whose issue is that? That, that had nothing to do with the person, it had to do with you, so you had to do the work. So really, first we need to become better bosses for ourselves, in other words, know really what it is that we're wanting, and then get better in the interviewing process and eliminating the people that aren't gonna fit our business or ourselves in the situation. Um, or our family. So if I'm going out on a date, am I picking the right people? Do I know subconsciously, consciously, are they in tune and are they match? Am I picking the right person for what I want? When I go out on these dates and if the people are telling me I don't want a committed relationship and let's say I do want one or if I want just fun and the person say I want a committed relationship, are those two aligned? And if it's not, am I moving on fast enough? Because people get used to they get bogged down with the attraction piece. They don't think about all these other pieces. Attraction might be the beginning piece, right? It would be like if you like the person that walks in on the interview. Well, we wouldn't hire anyone just based on that. We yeah. would hire people based on the merits of what they would fit into our. And it's the same thing when it comes to dates. We can't just get whisked away with, with um, attraction and, and forgo everything else because it's harder to find attraction or whatever people use as excuses um, in order yeah. to just move forward with the wrong person. Yeah. I definitely agree. And something when you wrote, when you were talking about that, I wrote down that, and again, this probably goes into clinical psychology, but, um, or not, but it's where we think someone else is not being accountable. Where have we not been accountable in our own life? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, if we think that someone you know, is cheating us. Where have we cheated our own selves in our life? Where had that person's abandoned us? Where have we abandoned our own selves in our life? And so can't trust that person. Where have you not trusted yourself in your own life? Again, this goes back to a vibrational match. Mm -hmm. So whatever's going on with you, you know what I mean? You have to start looking and it's, that's going in and doing the work and looking at yourself. Where have I held myself hostage? Where have I, you know, not been there for myself? And so I think these are all really good aspects to really kind of look at and see, you know, where you're at in your own life. Well, and you, we've gone through four questions and every single one had to do with starting with self. Yeah. And that's exactly what I try to do with people when they're working with me. Really, my job is the self part, right? Everything else you can do once you figure out the self. And I know this is really cliche, but people always say if you're pointing at someone, one is pointing at them, three is pointing back at you. But it's true. Yes. It really is. It starts with here and what we project out. And so if you are blaming someone else about something that they've done, look around at those different things in your life that you're upset with, blame other people with, and figure out what it is inside yourself. Because if those folks, whatever they were doing, didn't trigger something in you, you wouldn't have any kind of reaction. Right. So if you're having a reaction, that is your clue. That is the source's way, that is God's way of showing you exactly where the issue is. So pay attention <laughs> and, and go back in and be like, okay, why does this bug me so much? Yeah. Why am I saying he's not trustworthy? What is it inside of me that isn't trusting this person with me? Because mm -hmm. if you dig far enough in, you'll realize that there's something in here that is actually causing, like you said, if I don't trust you, then I probably don't trust myself. No, I'm an untrustworthy yeah. person. So, um, and if you can dig far enough in and you can heal that wound, then it won't keep showing up for you anymore. People might still act that way and it just doesn't trigger you anymore. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love it, I love it. So they can get a hold of you through email, correct? Yes, and my email. And it's doctors, Dr. Dot Zoha Fazel, and that's Z as in zebra, O H A, F as in Frank, A Z E L at gmail.com. So that you can just send me their questions if they like, um, and we can talk about it in the shows ahead. Yes. Um, or if they'd like to work with me, that would be another way that you can reach me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, oh my gosh, 
Dr. Zoha, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. It's always so much fun to have these conversations and to really help people Indeed. in the areas of love and dating. And I really appreciate you being here. And Thank you, and I Linda. Really I, appreciate, you, so. I appreciate you too. It was very fun. It's always fun for me to talk about love or any kind of, uh, any of these questions. But uh, yeah, I definitely enjoy our sessions. And I thank you again for allowing me, about me to be a part of it. Yeah, you're so welcome. And, and you know, our, our, really our intention is for everyone really to be in the right relationship with the, and be in alignment with the one that's right for them, but you have to be in alignment with yourself first. And so, um, yeah, and you can help people do that. So it's awesome. So thank you again. And thank you all who will be watching this video and don't forget to check last Sunday, um, on losing yourself. And you can go to YouTube um, and Linda Summers Life. You can find it there and all my videos. And then also on Instagram, Linda Summers Life, you can find it there. And on Facebook, under Linda Summers, you can find them there. And also, I didn't mention on Conscious Talk on Facebook, you can also find it there. So these videos will be up and then you can view those afterwards. And don't you know, forget to comment, subscribe, like, you know, send questions to either um, Dr. Z or myself. You can private message me and yeah, we'll look forward to next Sunday. I already have an idea what next Sunday is going to be. So it's going to be really good. Very informational as, as all these shows really are for you guys to be able to go out there and find love. And of course, Dr. Z can help you remove those blocks to be able to get into an alignment with the one that is right for you. So thank you everybody for being here today. We greatly appreciate it and we love you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Z. You. Thank you. Bye. Right. Love you guys. Bye.